Let, let's make a start. Let's make it single all here. And uh, for everyone, welcome to the Digital Gathering 2023. Uh, the, uh, com the conference here is uh, we, we have a series of uh, talks. We have some fantastic posters outside. We have uh, a number of workshops as well. So we look forward to the next couple of days and uh, discussing environmental science and data science together. I'm Steve Hallett one of the digital champions with, with Ron from Crawford University, so I'm sharing this morning. And uh, I'd like to start proceedings by just asking my colleague Pilvi to do the, a little bit of housekeeping for the, for the conference. Pilvi. Excellent. Oh, someone already clicked me through. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Uh, thank you so much, Steve. Um, I, my name is Pilvi Muscadiello. I work here at uh, the British Antarctic Survey within our innovation team as impact facilitator. <laughs> doesn't say that much to most people, but what I basically do is a lot of project management for things that are on the edges of the business as usual. And uh, the digital side, as it's growing, there's a lot of involvement, uh, as well as trying to look for ways of uh, supporting uh, Scott and our AI lab team uh, and such things. So I'm really um, happy to be here during these two days and also join in on, on the conversations. Uh, just to point out that there's no testing of any fire alarms uh, happening today, that only happens on Wednesday, so if there should be a persistent fire alarm, uh, it is you should treat it as a real one, and the nearest um, um, exit uh, is just on my uh, left hand side, your right hand side, and I would just say follow the flow of people because the BAS uh, colleagues know where they're going and we're basically headed all in the same direction. It's a car park on the far end over there. Um, if there's any other incidents, you can of course come and talk to me, but reception uh, is the best point of uh, call because they can call our first aiders that can come and help if there's uh, any first aid requirements, for example, or any other responses. Um, we have uh, toilets, so there's the ladies' toilets just um, on behind on your right hand side. Uh, gents are in the corridor uh, on your left hand side, and there's some inclusive uh, gender inclusive toilets downstairs. Um, if anyone is feeling like they need to step away uh, for a moment, we have a well-being room downstairs as well. It is beyond our security doors, so please uh, come and find me and I'll just uh, make sure that you have access to that. Um, and if you do have any other questions, be it practicalities or whatever it is, uh, come and talk to me. <laughs> All right, and I hope I do. Oh, yes, sorry, I did have a note that said two other things. Uh, so we're using Slido today. Um, uh, so if you've never used it before, it's a very uh, nice interactive tool uh, for being able to ask questions um, and uh, kind of increase uh, engagement as we probably in this broad audience can't all be talking at the same time. So if you just Google Slido um, on your uh, mobile devices, um, it will kind of pop up uh, the uh, the 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 screen to to enter this meeting. I think we have on the first slide uh, the code for the slide. Oh, it will ask you to enter the meeting code. That will be DG23. Uh, um, it's very self-explanatory. You can also uh, scan the QR code as some of you are already doing. Um, the final thing on uh, my end is just that um, there is some filming that's going to be happening. Uh, it should be pretty obvious because uh, they're going to be walking around with a <laughs> A camera. So if you prefer not to be on film, uh, just be a little bit mindful uh, of that or go uh, and tap the person filming uh, on the shoulder. Um, this is just to kind of uh, document a little bit what's going on uh, over the next two days. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely. One, of, one, of the, one of the reasons, of course, for um, having Slido is there's about a hundred of us here. But we're also joined various times during the, the next couple of days by 50 people who yes. are online. And they're welcome to you as well if you're watching us online. Uh, so next up, I'd, I'd like to ask uh, fellow district champion, Professor Ron Costanzo from Cranfield to come and give a few comments and opening thoughts. And after that, to hear from from no, from Dr. Simon Gardner. So Ron, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome. It's incredible to see everybody again. This is our second gathering. Um, 
and it's great that uh, everybody's here. Um, I'd like to thank Bass for hosting this event for an incredible venue. I didn't realize I was going to be faced with throwing my boat face as I walked in, but the ice core is actually far more interesting next to it. I don't know if you guys seen it. Um, you can see the different ice bubbles as you come through. And clearly this kind of gives you a sense. Well, last year we were at the University of Birmingham, today we're at Bass. The breadth of what it means to be a digital environment, um, the different domains, the different spaces we touch, um, all the way from worrying about ice cores to worrying about uh, habitat quality and habitat mapping in the UK. Um, I'd also like to thank NERC uh, for making this possible. Um, Simon, Josie, Anna, thank you very much. Uh, we wouldn't be here without you guys. It's great to have your support. Okay, I just want to remiss a bit um, about what we've achieved. We've been in this now for for many years, uh, we've survived COVID. Uh, that proved quite a challenge. At the same time, the challenge gave quite a lot of opportunities. A lot of you I saw for the first time in Birmingham last year. Before that, it was all uh, online type meetings. In that period, um, you know, we've we've reached and touched and been busy with thirty two institutions and forty five project partners. We've had at least twenty six digital technologies used. Um, we've had many workshops. Um, some of them virtual, many of them virtual, and more and more of them in person. Some of them are uh, typical to digital environments like hackathons. Others are more traditional academic, uh, like we're having today. Um, our expert network's been a massive success. Again, it's crossed all institutions, all different disciplines. We've had geologists talking to people that do Arctic surveys. We have um, ecologists talking to people that do atmospheric sciences. It's been an incredible cross-disciplinary exercise. And to me, the biggest take-home message from this has been how incredibly cross-disciplinary it has been. Um, we've had people work art in the digital environment. Um, and with us, we have, I think, a poet in the back there um, who is basically working with words and how to, and that creative expression and how that relates to the digital environment. Now, this is very important to me because basically, as you start thinking about digital technology, and how that digital technology has revolutionized what we do. That digital technology is also going to revolutionize how we interact with the environment and how the, how the, the public interact with the environment. And that can go both ways. It can be a very positive interaction in the sense that it makes the environment more accessible, it makes the environment um, in many ways more open to everybody. Um, and in effect, you can start thinking of enjoying environmental and enjoying certain types of environments without the uh, associated carbon footprint. In other words, I can, show, I, can, I can go through the rainforest in Brazil without needing to fly there. The downside of though is there's lots of risks with digital technology, as we are well aware of now, uh, and the risk of digital technology influencing and changing each behavior perceptions. And to me, that ability to interact and understand not only the digital, this digital space, you know, the computational power, the analytical power, but also how that interacts with society and that societal component is key to making the digital environment work for everybody. Um, other big successes um, are our digital trail exercises where we've really started mapping uh, where NERC data can be found and made available to, the, uh, to other researchers. Our webinar series, um, one still ongoing, but we've had seven in total. And again, the range of topics are, are wide ranging. We've gone all the way from typical data science, AI type stuff, to data and law, from data and ethics. And I got involved into a very, very interesting set of talks and conversations uh, with individuals across the world around the ethics of data and who owns the data and where does it come from and how does one represent and respect that ownership as one uses the data. And with that, you can go into the traditional IP type stories, but these people are more concerned about traditional knowledge indigenous knowledge. So when you do go to the Amazon and you take a measurement, to what degree do you have to represent and reflect that some of that knowledge actually came from indigenous people? And then how do you put that in the metadata file? So I'm going to summarize and to hand over to, to Simon. Uh, it's been an incredible couple of years. Um, hopefully 
this will continue um, because the way this is kind of broken across disciplines put digital science at the heart of environmental science and put environmental science in the widest aspect to me is transformative um, and to me very much the solutions we, to many of our challenges that we have in the environmental science world about the biodiversity, climate change, by mitigation, adaptation, digital is a key unlocker to that. We will be able to do it because of digital tools. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. And uh, now I'd just like to ask Simon to give a few opening thoughts from the perspective of no. Simon. Yeah, morning, everyone. It's great to see so many of you here, and I really appreciate the commitment that you've made to be here so early on a, on, on a Monday morning uh, in Cambridge. Uh, I know that it, it, it takes a bit of time to get here, um, so I, I, appreciate, um, I appreciate that very much. First of all, just uh, some thanks. Um, well, first of all, I should introduce myself properly. So I'm Simon Gardner. I work within the um, Digital Environment Data and Infrastructure team. Uh, within NERC. So our Associate Director, Anna Ranga smith is sat right in the middle of you. Uh, there, that was just a brief wave from Anna. There she is. There she is. <laughs> and there were a few of us dotted around um, uh, in here th this morning. Um, I, I need to thank um, Steve, um, Ron, and and others like 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 John, um, like Pilvi, uh, who's just come in, like Scott, for actually making this happen, for, for providing Bass as a wonderful venue for us uh, to meet. Um, and over the next two days, I think there'll be a great opportunity to have you know important peer-to-peer -peer conversations uh, and networking. So above and beyond the agenda that we we have set out, I, I think it's important to remember that this is a um, this is an event developed and designed by the community for the community, uh, and that's how we should use it over the next couple of days. Having said that, we tried to put together a really varied uh, agenda for everyone. Uh, there are, you can see that there are a number of uh, themes, things like next generation sensing, data science tools and techniques, people and skills, which resonate, um, you know, not just with things like the constructing a digital environment, program as a discrete investment, but more broadly with the NERC digital strategy between uh, 2020 and, and 2030. Uh, uh, we also have a series of, of keynotes, so Emily uh, Lyons will be uh, kicking um, that off in, in just a minute, but also some masterclasses and spotlight talks as well. So we're hoping to keep you engaged over the next two days, um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you.